Hello everyone, welcome back to Kamarin lecture again. So this lecture we will be discussing the part 2 of Kamarin. So before I discuss the lecture, uh, explain, I would like to go through the learning outcome. So regarding learning outcome, we have already seen the definition of Kamarin and we have also discussed in uh, detail about, about the various significance of uh, Kamarin and we have also seen two examples of glycosides of Kamarin. This lecture we will go through <coughs> the different examples, different types of uh, Kamarin and their medicinal importance. So at the end of this lecture you will be able to outline botanical name, family name, uses, side effect, mechanism of action of following Kamarin, mainly scopolidine, sorolin and its derivative then kelin, bargaptan, bargaptan is nothing but another derivative of sorolin which is known as 5-methoxy sorolin and in the next lecture we will continue with escoline, picrotoxin. This lecture we will also discuss the biosynthesis of Kamarins. So, first we will discuss about scopolatine. Scopolatine is a phytoalexin. It is available in the mainly in the quassia wood. And when I talk about the quassia, it is a collective term for two plants that is the botanical name Picrasma excelsa as well as Quassia amara. And both of them belong to the same family that is Simarubosi. Now regarding the use of scopolatine, the scopolatine has antispasmodic effect, okay. So it is used as antispasmodic for its uterine sedative activity. Moreover, it also uh, has antimicrobial activity. So mainly two uses, antispasmodic and antimicrobial activity of scopolatine. We go to the next example that is sorolene. Sorolene is one of the most important uh, medicinal, medicinally important example of coumarin. These are also known as photosensitizing coumarins. If you are photosensitizing, uh, photosensitizing furocoumarin, if you look at the structure, it is the sorolin, the structure of sorolin, the coumarin ring is fused with a furan ring because of which they are also known as furocoumarins. They are the common cause of phototoxicity and it occurs in a number of plant families like Umbelliferae or Apiaceae. Another important derivative of sorolin which has uh, medicinal value is methoxalin. Methoxalin is nothing but uh, chemically it is 8-methoxy sorolin because the methoxy group is attached to the 8th position of the coumarin ring. It is also available in the market with the name of oxoralin or xenthotoxin. It is mainly available or found as a constituent of chemocarp. This is the structure of chemocarp. Chemocarp that is nothing but the description of fruit of phenyl, you know the phenyl seed. The botanical name of which is Ammima juice, which belongs to the family Ambelliferae. Umbelliferi again, as I mentioned, it is one of the family which uh, the plant species of this family contain a lot of coumarins. Regarding the uses of sorolin, now we will see why uh, sorolin is considered as one of the most important uh, chemical constituent or coumarin medicinally because it is able to facilitate Repigmentation in idiopathic vitiligo, which is nothing but known as leucoderma. Look at the picture of leucoderma. Leucoderma, where you can see the people 
have white patches okay lack of pigments in their whole body I hope you know as a pharmacist generally even though there are various treatments available uh, for the treatment of idiopathic vitiligo lipoderma they are not so successful you know uh, in most of the cases people survive their whole life those who are having the lipoderma or idiopathy uh, vitiligo without having a proper treatment not only that it is also found to be useful for the symptomatic control of severe disabling psoriasis you look at the picture of psoriasis psoriasis where you can see the thickening of the skin okay in, in patches even though psoriasis is curable but still it is difficult to cure psoriasis which takes very long time and uh, uh, various allopathic treatment options that are available in the market for the treatment of psoriasis they have their own side effects so it has been observed that using of sorolen for the treatment of psoriasis is very useful as compared to those market product and this methoxalan may be and methoxalan that is the derivative of sorolen may be applied topically or it can be also taken internally internally okay with the exposure to uv light but you need to remember there is always a risk associated okay with the use of methoxalan mainly and the most important side effect or you can say the dangerous side effect that is associated with methoxalan especially if you take internally okay it can cause carcinogenesis may lead to the development of cancer okay so it is most suitable for the uh, use topically for its use topically you can see two of the marketed product mm -hmm. i have given here one is sorolen nh another one is oxorolen regarding the biosynthesis of coumarins okay coumarin can be biosynthesized mainly from cinnamic acid cinnamic acid uh, uh, first it undergo hydroxylation okay and the para position of the aromatic ring in presence of or with the help of an enzyme known as cinnamate for hydroxylase this further undergo hydroxylation okay second hydro uh, hydroxylation with the help of another enzyme which is known as cinnamate or coumarin to hydroxylase okay then it follows the cyclization of the ring which results in the formation of coumarin the structure here given is nothing but the structure of umbelliferon which is an example of coumarin we will go go to the next example of coumarin that is known as khelin khelin is again an example of furocoumarin why it is known as furocoumarin if you look at the structure the coumarin ring is attached to coumarin ring is attached to a furan ring that's why it is known as furocoumarin another interesting feature if you look at this structure here the keto group is present here at the fourth position and it has lipophilic property and it can cause vasodilation and it is found in the plant the botanical name of the plant is ammi visnaga this is the structure of the plants and the flowers the plant how it looks like and it belongs to the family apsc now khelin when we talk about khelin the first use of khelin was found mainly in the uh, egyptian folk medicine in if you read the Egyptian folk medicine they used to use khelin a lot mainly okay uh, for the treatment of renal colic where the plant khela was used for the treatment of renal colic means renal spasm spasm of uh, the nephron or uh, tubule and the incidence of renal colic was uh, found to be mostly due to cystosomiasis infection as well as due to stone formation inside the renal tubule and 
taking the plant extract of Hella was found to be useful, very useful for the treatment of renal colic. And from there, actually, the idea of Helene uh, uh, was taken and the further lot of research was carried out for its beneficial effect. And the plant mixture also showed the diuretic properties, which is again uh, related to the relieving of the related to a cause for relieving the renal colic. Not only as a so relieving the renal colic mainly by two ways. One by showing the diuretic properties, another by also showing the antispasmodic effect. So as I mentioned, it is also found to be a spasmolytic releasing the spasm and also a vasodilator. It can also relax the ureter as well as coronary arteries. But it is not used as systemic medication even though it was found to have uh, reported to have a good effect especially for the treatment of renal colic and it was shown to have diuretic properties as well as plasmolytic. It is not used systemically because it is difficult to absorb first of all and secondly even if it is absorbed, it can cause a lot of undesirable side effects like dizziness, headache, GI disorder like nausea and vomiting. So if I ask you a question, why Kaline is not preferred as systemic medication? How many reasons? Mainly two reasons. First of all, it is difficult to absorb from the GI tract and secondly, even if it is absorbed, it shows undesirable side effects. So it was successfully or it has been successfully used mainly to treat vitiligo by topical application rather than systemic application. So in the considering the usefulness of Kaleen in the uh, early 20th centuries a lot of research was carried out in uh, with an aim to develop various Kaleen analogs okay uh, uh, with lower toxicity or in you can say to achieve lower toxicity as well as better efficacy two of the two of, two of the successful example of Kaleen analog that are being used in the market okay with uh, with having lower toxicity and better efficacy than Kaleen are amiodaron and chromolin sodium. If you look at the structure of amiodaron and chromolin sodium, they are the two derivatives of, or you can say they are the product which are the outcome of research on Kaleen having lower toxicity and better efficacy as compared to the Kaleen. And this is one of the marketed product. This is again another marketed product, both of which are mainly used topically. Now we we'll go to our next example that is Bargaptan. So if you look at the name Bargaptan chemically it is known as 5-methoxysorlen. That means it is nothing but another derivative of sorolen. So when we talk about sorolen, how many products we are studying? First one is sorolin, second one we studied methoxalin, that is 8 methoxy sorolin. Now we are discussing 5 methoxy sorolin. Okay, so naturally it is also a furocamarin because it is attached to the furan ring. And if you see the numbering 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the methoxy group is attached to the fifth position of the camarin ring. That's why it is also known as 5 methoxy sorolin. So it is mainly found in bergamot essential oil. The botanical name is Citrus bergamia, which is nothing but the bergamot orange. And it is also available in other uh, citrus essential oils as well as in grapefruit juice. And it is produced by the plant mainly as a protective mechanism against the high doses of sunlight and because of which because it can protect 
from the high dose of sunlight, okay, it is mainly used in the formulation of sunscreen lotion, okay, uh, and used for the cosmetic purpose. So you can find in the mar market a lot of sunscreen lotions are prepared containing the barcaptan, okay, because it can protect your skin from the high dose of sunlight. Second use is the barcaptan free bergamot essential oil is also used in the preparation of perfume because of its sweet smell. So see there are two uses, not to be confused. Bergaptan, when the bergaptan is mainly used for the preparation of sunscreen lotion, whereas bergaptan free essential oil is used uh, in the perfumery because of the smell, sweet smell. So with this, before I finish my lecture, I would like to again ask a few questions to check your knowledge. First question, which of the following furocamarin can be used for the treatment of idiopathic vitiligo or lipoderma? The correct answer is Vargaptan, Soralin, Escolin. You know Escolin now. The correct answer is Soralin. Second question. Which of the following statement is false regarding the phytoconstituent helene? Read carefully. It has phosmolyting activity. It has diuretic activity. It has vasodilatory activity. And it has anti-malarial activity. So you have to find out which one is false. We know all the options A, B, C, they are correct. Helene shows all the three properties except anti-malarial activity. So the correct answer is option D. So with this I finish my lecture here. We will continue again as the last part that is part 3 in our next lecture. Thank you for your attention.